I'm going to share something with you today that I'm totally committed to. I mean, if God doesn't go this way, I'm in trouble because I'm going this way till I go to heaven. Okay, so just so you'll know, I'm, I'm, I'm committed uh, because I believe that God is about to do some things and I'm not trying to promote anything today, don't misunderstand me, but I mean it could very well happen this week in a phenomenal way because of this atmosphere. Okay, so just so you'll understand, I believe we're about to see God do some things that are beyond our imagination. I really do. I'm, I'm convinced of it. I just, I don't believe we're going to go out quietly. Amen. I don't believe that. Listen, when God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, which is a type of the world, they begged them to go. I tell you, before this thing's over, the world's going to be begging us to go. Jesus, come get these people and leave. Amen. I do. And I so I'm going to share with you uh, some things today that are preparation for the rest of the week. And, you know, that's what a pastor does. He tries to get you ready. And um, so that's just part of what I want to share with you today because uh, we've got four nights, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, to see God do something great. Uh, and I'm just telling you it's going to happen. By the way, i got to say this real quick. we got Fusion in the house today. Come on, give them a hand, all of our youth. Glory to God, they're here, and we're glad to have them. But I, I didn't want to forget that. But, but I, I believe that, that if you'll hear what I'm saying and be a part of what I'm saying, God can do some awesome things. And uh, I'm going to start in Genesis chapter 2. Verse 8, it says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. God created a garden. Can you imagine God creating a garden? You know, I, 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 lo I love Hawaii. And, uh, you know, I hadn't been there in a number of years, but, but it's beautiful. I mean, it's just beautiful. But it's nothing compared to what God can do. People say, well, we just enjoy God's creation. You are enjoying a perversion of God's creation. Did you know that? Because it's perverted. It, 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 the, a curse came on it because of Adam and Eve. It's not anywhere near what it's going to be. He's going to burn this thing up and start all over again. It's going to be awesome. And so... We, we really don't have a clue how, how majestic and how pure this place was called the Garden of Eden. And so God put his man in there, and then it says in verse 15, the Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. He said, I'm going to create it, but it's your responsibility to take care of it. Man, I don't know. That'd be pretty wild, you having to take care of perfection. But that's what he did. So I just want to create a picture for you. So, so God's created this perfect place. And it's, it's man's responsibility to take care of it. But how many of you know what happened? Yeah. They, Adam and Eve screwed up. They did. They, got, they, they, they brought sin into the world. And, and because of that, it came to us. And with no way to get free of it. That's why God had to get, free, get, it, get us free of it. No way to get free of it. Because it passed to every man. But I want to show you something here that happened after man fell, but it also happened before man fell, and I want you to get a picture of this, all right? So it says in chapter 3, verse 8, that Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from, now listen to this, the presence of the Lord God 
among the trees of the garden. Now, you know what that tells me? This was a regular, habitual thing for God to do before Adam and Eve transgressed in the garden. He was not coming down there to check on them. He was coming down there for his regular fellowship, his regular visit to them. God created Adam and Eve, created a pure, special place for them, and his whole goal was to come down in their midst and to be in, not them come to him, him come to them. And to be there with them, and it was called the presence of the Lord. And he's there with them in that time. Well, that's what God started with. Now, I'm going to just tell you this, because I learned this a long time ago. Whatever God started, that's the way it's going to end up. You ever thought, there may be time in between, but if God started something one way, it's going to end up. It's going to end up that way. The enemy might come in, try to steal, try to stop it, but but what God started in Genesis is still going to completely be finished. All right, so first place, Genesis, we find God wanting to come down and to dwell with man. His presence to be with man. Adam and Eve transgressed. Things got out of whack. So Exodus chapter 19, God said through Moses, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. I bore you on eagle's wings, verse 4, Exodus 19. I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, keep my covenant, you shall be my special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now, listen to this. And you shall be to me, everybody with me? A kingdom of priests, a holy nation. And these are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. God said, I want every person to be a priest unto me. Not just a few who go talk to God. I want every person to be that priest unto me. But you know, we've perverted that. We think the preacher is the priest. We're not. I, I uh, Many years ago, I had a, uh, a, a lady call the office, and, and uh, she was um, homebound, and, and uh, she asked me, would I come visit her? And I didn't know her, but I said, yes, I will. I'll come visit you. I, I, I told the first service, I might as well tell you, I didn't have anything else to do. Nobody wanted to come hear me preach, so I had to do something. <laughs> So I went to visit her, and this was a very wealthy lady. And, um, and she was a drinker, you know, and, and that type of thing. And, and, um, and I went, and I prayed for her and, and ministered to her. And uh, she was an older lady, you know, and, and, um, and I prayed for her and ministered to her. And, and she gave me an offering. Man, I took it. Woo, I needed it. Man, it was a blessing. About a week or so later, she calls me again. I need you to come see me. I said, uh, okay, I'll come back. So I went back, and I counseled with her, and I prayed with her, you know, and ministered to her, and she handed me another check. And I said, I'm not taking it. This is, this is, not, this is getting out of hand. This is not what, no, I'm, I'm not taking it. No, you have to take it. I said, no, I don't want your money. I didn't come over here for your money, and I'm not taking it. Well, she kind of got a little upset with me, but I didn't take it. I wasn't going to take it. So about another week passes, and she calls me back and says, would you come back? And I said, yeah, I'm coming, all right. So I went back to see her, and I ministered to her, prayed for her, you know, and God, you know, she felt that touch every time I went, and she felt it. And, and, so, and, I, and so I said, listen, I'm not coming back. Why? I said, because I'm not your personal priest. 
You're trying to make me your personal priest. I said, you need to be a priest of God for yourself. You need to know God for yourself. You need to hear his voice for yourself. And, you know, but she didn't want that. She wanted me to be her priest. And really, that's, that's the way a lot of people in the body of Christ are today. They're wanting somebody else to do it for them. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. But in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 10, God gave some instructions. The Lord said to Moses, go to the people, consecrate them today and tomorrow, let them wash their clothes, let them be ready for the third day, for on the third day, now listen to this, the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. God still wanted to come down. He still wanted to come into the midst of his people. He wanted them to all be priests so they could all experience him. And he wanted to come down in their midst. And so he said, get them ready, Moses. I'm going to come down. Now, I like to say it like this. It probably isn't really the way it was. But I believe God got so excited, man, he just sparks started flying. Lightning and thunder, and he came down on that mountain because he wanted to meet with his, with his people. And he came down, and it was so powerful, lightning and thunder, and a cloud of his glory came down over the mountain. But the problem was it scared the people because there was thunder and lightning, and there was trumpets, and, 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 and it scared the people. So in Exodus chapter 20, in verse 19, they told Moses, Moses, you speak with us, we'll hear, but let God not speak with us or we're going to die. <laughs> let me tell you something about the presence of God. Sometimes it causes people to come to God. Sometimes it causes people to run from God. I have watched in services where the presence of God was in here in such a wonderful way, and I've seen people get up and walk out because they can't take it because they're not willing to change. These people became fearful. They said, no, 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 we can't do this. We, no, 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 we don't want to do that. Uh, Moses, you talk to God, and we'll listen to whatever he tells you, and, and we'll go by that, which they didn't. God wants you to be a priest. I'm going to show you this in the Word today. But he always has wanted to come and dwell with his people. Now just hang with me here, all right? So over in Exodus chapter 25, children of Israel are delivered from Egypt. And in, verse, in chapter 25, verse 8, God said, Make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among you. Make me a sanctuary where I will dwell among you. I want to come down and be with you. God wants to be with us. He created us for that communion, that fellowship. He wants to come down. He wants to be a part of us. He wants to be active. And so, verse 22, he said, There... I'll meet with you. Build me a sanctuary. I'll come down and I'll meet with you. So we move on a little further and the children of Israel have gotten into sin. They lost the Ark of the Covenant, which if you'll study it, it's, it's literally the Ark of His presence. Wherever that Ark was, that's where His presence was. And so the Philistines captured that ark of his presence. And so David got it back. And when David got it back, he bought a piece of property to build a place for that ark. And they brought the ark of his presence. And in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 19, uh, it says, give the Lord the glory due his name, bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. In other words, come worship him in his presence. Come worship him where he is. 
And then David desired to build a real place for God. I mean a real house, a house that would blow people's minds. But God said, you can't do it. You have too much blood on your hands. He said, I'm going to let your son do it. So Solomon built the most fabulous temple. I mean, if you read about it, there's no telling how many billions of dollars in today's money it cost. It would make the Taj Mahal look like a tent. It was just fabulous, beautiful. I mean, there was just, I don't even want to try to describe how magnificent it was. And so, once it was built, in verse 11 of 2 Chronicles 5, it says, It came to pass when the priest, now listen to this, when the priest came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions, and the Levites who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Heman, and Jeduthun and their sons and their brethren stood at the east of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals. We got cymbals. Having stringed instruments. We got stringed instruments. Having harps. We got pianos. That's a harp. And with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and the singers, now listen, were as one. To make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord when they lifted their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, He is good. His mercy endures forever. Now listen to this. Listen to this. That the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. The glory of God. So that the priest could not even continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house. God came down. He came down. Now see, listen to me today. People today, they, they, they've missed something. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get you to hear this because I believe this is what God wants to do. Okay? They, he, they, they missed something. They said, well, that was the old covenant. That's what God did, the old covenant. That was the old way. The Bible says that Jesus gave us a better covenant based on better promises. How much more does God want to come down in our midst? How much more does he want to work in our midst? But see, we have, we have missed that to a certain degree because we have, and, and not in a bad way, but we have exalted the personal temple of God. First, First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have from God, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we say, well, we're the temple of God. So wherever I go, God goes. Well, that's true to a degree. And, and, and it should be that way. That's, he does go with us. Thank God he does. But there's more to it than that. Because if that's all there is, we're missing something. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 says, What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, listen, I will dwell in them and I will walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. God doesn't just want to dwell in us for us. He wants to walk among us corporately. By the Holy Spirit, by His presence, by His glory. He wants to flow into our lives. He wants to walk with us in our lives. But in order to do that, you've got to hear what I'm about to tell you. Because if you don't, then you're, gonna, you're going to put this aside 
as some ancillary, some secondary thing that isn't really that important when it's just as important as God dwelling in you. Because it is, listen to me, not only is it wonderful for us, but it is a sign to the world that God is here. That God is here. A number of years ago, I don't remember now how long it's been, we went to, uh, we did a meeting in Rio de Janeiro. And and uh, we took some of the we took the musicians and and singers and part of the choir down there. I don't know what about forty people something. We had a bunch go. I mean, we've got a band, have band, we'll travel. We've got a choir, have choir, we'll travel. I mean, they're 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 ready. And and so we did. We really this was kind of set up by someone else. And so when we got there, there were all of these preachers there, some from Korea and all over the place, and 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 they were all there and. And, um, uh, and the building, he kind of overdid it, and the building was about half full. And, and, um, and so the choir and band got up and started singing and worshiping God. I'm telling you, worshiping God. And they started singing a song we used to sing called Sweep Me Away. Woo, I'm telling you, the presence of God came in that place. Just, I mean, just powerful powerful and I've got a point here and so they were trying to put on the screen the words for sweep me away and they tried broom and you know different things and and they couldn't get it so they just started flashing in Portuguese God is here 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 and I'll tell you he was and I mean, the glory of God came in that place. And, and people, I mean, they were, they, they were touched mightily by God. That day. I could, is a wonderful, wonderful. I mean, it took your breath away. God was there. That's our, that's our sign. God is here. God is here. God is here. But now listen. In order for this to happen... You've got to understand your responsibility as a, as a believer because we have allowed it to slip out of our lives. And some part, part of it is, I know is leadership, but I, I'm not pointing my finger at anybody, but I'm not going to let it slip. Now listen to what the Word of God says, and this is going to help you, all right? So listen to me. God still wants to come down and dwell among His people. But there are some caveats to that. There, it has to be done a, a right way. Okay? And it's found in Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 20. It says, Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now listen to this. In whom the whole building fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. We are individuals, but when we come together and God fits us together, then we literally build a temple for God. For him to come and to dwell in. Now, this is not easily done because you have responsibilities. It says, in whom you are being built together for the dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The King James calls it habitation. Now, let me tell you why most people don't want to get involved with this. Why they just really go, go around and say, oh, I'm a temple of God. I'm a temple of God. Yeah, but there's a bigger temple. There's a greater temple. And that temple is us being built together as one for God to come and to dwell, down, dwell in our midst. But, the, but here's how the Lord showed it to me. And I don't know why I'm saying I'm, I'm in Hawaii again. 
But a number of years ago, Becky and I wanted to take the kids to Hawaii, and I had the mileage for the tickets, but, man, it was expensive. To, and, but we found out you could rent a house for about the third of the price you could stay in a hotel for that many people. And so us and another pastor and his family, we rented a house, and we just all piled in this, in this house. And so we're just visiting this house, okay? We're just guests. Nice house, but we're just guests. So one day the fridge quit fridging. <laughs> you know what? I didn't care. I picked up the phone and said, hey, come fix your refrigerator. It's not my house. It's yours. Right, right. A few days later, one of the sprinklers broke in the yard. And I mean, water was going everywhere. Hey, your sprinklers are broke. Yeah, yeah. Now, see, here's the deal. Now, listen to me. Here's the deal. People want to visit church because they don't have to fix anything. But when you dwell somewhere, when there's a habitation, then you're responsible to fix it. You're responsible to fix your life, to deal with your life, to make the adjustments in your life that you have to make. And people don't want to do that. Well, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't know whether I want to do that or not. Well, there you go. That's why God doesn't walk among you. But when you find a people, and I believe we found them right here. We found a people who literally want to be fitted together. They'll produce that holy temple just like in the Old Testament, and God will come and dwell among us. When he dwells among us, things happen. Things happen. God moves. God works. God changes lives. God heals. God delivers. And listen, it's not a man. It's not a man. We've been so man-centered in our, and looking for God. Man of God. And, and I don't mind being called man of God sometimes, but I get embarrassed by it, to be honest with you, that, that people call me a man of God. I, I believe I am, but it's just kind of embarrassing, you know. To, because, look, it's God that does it. I mean, I'm just a delivery boy. Paul said one time, well, if I preach because I want to, it's great. But if I preach because I don't want to, it's not good, but I still got to preach. Look. God wants to do some things. We have a perfect opportunity the next four nights for this to happen. And it's going to happen. I don't know when. I don't know how. But, but it cannot happen unless you make up your mind that you're not going to be a visitor. That, that this is a habitation thing that we're going after. Because it says, now listen to this. In whom you are built together for the dwelling place of God. Not just you individually, together. Yes. Now, how is this done? By the Holy Spirit. Yes. By the Spirit. Now, I'm going to preach tonight some things about the Holy Spirit that may kind of surprise you. Because I think we've been limited in the Holy Spirit. I think we've kind of been structured and taught a certain way, and we just kind of structure. Listen, there are no limits. There are no limits. He raised Jesus from the dead. There are no limits. There are no limits. We're the limiter. Well, but you're talking about the Holy Spirit. You need to be talking about Jesus. Listen, you come tonight, you'll find out. Okay. All right. Now listen. So we're building the dwelling place by the Spirit. Let me just make this statement to you. The Lord just spoke this to me. I believe it was the Lord during, the, during worship today. One of the reasons that we have short services is because we don't expect anything exceptional to happen. We just don't expect anything. 
I got to tell you, I'm expecting. I don't want to have a long service to have a long service. But I tell you, on the other hand, if it means waiting on God for God to do something, I'll be here till the dawn of day. I don't care. Because once that comes, once it comes, it refreshes, it overcomes everything else. So we are building something this week. We're building for His presence. We're building up for His presence. Now, now follow me here. I'm just about finished, but listen to this. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 says this. Listen. You also, as living stones, are built up a spiritual house. Okay, you got it? See, you're just one block. I didn't call you a blockhead. You're just one block in a spiritual house. But when we come together, we put those building blocks in place. All of a sudden, we've built a dwelling place. Now, I don't know it all, and I don't know all the keys, but I found a couple. I found a couple that will cause God to come down. One of them is real simple. It's called prayer. Okay, But there's another one that we can all do. Now listen to what it says. You are living stones, built up a spiritual house. Here it is. A holy priesthood to offer up. Everybody say offer up. Spiritual sacrifices. Acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We offer spiritual sacrifices. Well, I know one of them over in Hebrew says the sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of your time. Sacrifice of yourself. Willing to give of yourself to the Lord. Willing to wait on God. Willing to give yourself to, 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 to the Lord. Now listen, willing to just worship Him. I found out that worship stirs up the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, it stirs up the Holy Spirit, and that's when God says, Let her, let's, let's get her done. Come on, let's do it right now. I'm coming down. We're going to walk. We're going to deal with some things tonight. We're going to touch some people tonight. We're going to heal some people tonight. Now, this is not a, certainly a, a judgment or critical or anything, but I learned this in a Benny Hinn meeting. The Lord showed me this in a Benny Hinn meeting, if you know who he is. He was here in Shreveport a number of years ago. And I found out he knows what to do because he knows how to worship. And... We, I don't know how many people were there, 8,000, 10,000 people, it was a huge crowd. And they were all worshiping. Whew. Everybody was worshiping. The blocks came together. Everybody was worshiping God. And I'm telling you, all of a sudden, people were getting healed here. People were getting healed here. People were getting healed here. He didn't do anything. He didn't lay hands on anybody. He didn't pray for anybody. Nothing. We're just worshiping. And all of a sudden, God started walking through the place and healing people, touching people, ministering to people. I got it. He's a pretty smart guy. I got it. I said, I can do that. I can do that myself. Because, see, most of you know this testimony, but but I can't sing a lick. Now, Joe says I can sing. He, he said, it's just a matter of practice. But he didn't ask to hear me either. But listen, I had an experience with God. I mean, I literally had an experience with God where God made me a worshiper. I was not a worshiper. And he made me a worshiper. And it changed me. It changed this church. It changed everything. You know why we worship before I come up and preach? Because that's what we're waiting on. Yes. 
And I found out that that worship energizes the Holy Spirit. It energizes God to work and to, and to move. And, and look, we have to communicate the Word. And there are things that you need to understand, just like I'm telling you today, in order to step over into different things. And, and, I, and, and so you have to understand that. But the thing that you have to understand is that you have to do it. You're that living stone. I don't think I'm just going to stay home tonight. Well, good. Just keep your stone at home. Just be a, just, you know, go put it out in the yard, plant some flowers around it. Or you can put it with a bunch of others and see God dwell in our midst. See God come down in our midst. Because the priest offered up to God. I talked about this um, over in Acts chapter 13. It says that they ministered to the Lord and fasted and the Holy Ghost said that word ministered there is only found in one other place in the new testament it's over in hebrews where it talks about the old testament priest ministering in the temple they ministered to the lord do you know that worship ministers to the lord and so we are coming together. Jesus said over in John chapter 4, verse 23, he said, the hour is coming. Oh, wait a minute, forget that. It now is. When the true worshiper will worship, listen to this, the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. He's looking for worshipers. Why? Because he wants to dwell among them. God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Not with a spirited song. That's okay to have one, but the Holy Spirit's got to be in it. Or you're just motivating your flesh or your soul. I believe we're at that place right now where we as a church, okay, we as a group, and if you'll hear me today, that's you. You can come together and we can start building these blocks and God can do something this week. I don't know what. I have been in services where he's taken my breath away almost. It's been so overwhelming. I've seen people totally healed. I've seen people who, were, who couldn't, even, couldn't even bend over because they were, their backs were broken. And the glory of God come in and they fly across four rows and stand up healed. Nobody touch them. Is that real? Oh, yeah. I've been in services where, you, where every person in the room could not even get up off the floor. The glory of God was so heavy. I'm not trying to talk you into anything. I'm just telling you examples. How did it happen? It came because of worship. Because the stones built themselves up. They came for a purpose. And listen, right in the midst of that, you bring somebody that's not saved or they've been away from God or they're not familiar with the things of the Spirit, and you bring them in that environment, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to do just like that sign in Rio. God is here. God is here. God is here. And it'll change their lives. It'll change their future. I've got one more scripture I want to share with you. I'm finished. Now listen to this. In Genesis chapter 11, all the people on the earth spoke the same language. And they said, we got to make a name for ourselves. And so we're going to build a city, bigger than any city, better than any city there is. And we're going to build a tower that's going to go up to the clouds. It's going to be magnificent. Now, you know they were doing that for a wrong motive, wrong purposes. God said, I can't let that happen. You know why he said that? Because he said, if I don't stop it, Nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Do you think that God 
would respond if all of his people came together in one accord and worshiped? Listen, there would be nothing that we proposed that would be withheld from us. Because he's God and he wants to dwell in our midst. That's what I'm after this week. If you don't like it, it's up to you. But if you're willing to sacrifice, make a spiritual sacrifice and say, I'm going to be here every night and we're going to see the glory of God, there is no way that our God won't respond to that. You can bring the most critical case, the most difficult person, and you let God melt them in that presence. It, it will literally melt them in the presence of God. If you really believe that God will come down. Now I'm telling you today by the Holy Spirit. I'm convinced. You want to know what God's going to do in the future? It's not about an election. We ought to vote. We ought to pay attention. We ought to do right. But it's not about that. It's about God being here. This little old church right around on Merriweather. God being here. God being here. I don't know about anybody else. I don't know about any other place. All I know is about here. I want God to be here. I want people to walk in this building and not look at me and say, Oh, I tell you, Sam Carr's a good preacher. I want them to walk in this building and say, God's in this place. It's like what Becky was talking about, the lady that came for prayer. She came to prayer, never been involved in a spirit-filled community at all. The people, we were in here praying for the Freedom Crusade, and she comes in, she says, what is this? What is this? It's God dwelling. You have that, you have that ability. You have a need in your own life. Make that sacrifice and see God answer that need. He'll respond to you. He'll bring wisdom to you. He'll heal you. He'll deliver you. He'll, he, it, unbelievable the things that God can do. If you just make up your mind, you're going to do it. That's the word for you. Now <clears throat> You have to decide what you're going to do with it. Well, I had plans for the fourth. Well, good for you. I hope that barbecue is good. Actually, I'm going to pray you have indigestion. No, I wouldn't do that. Hey, that might be a good idea. I'm going to just pray you have indigestion. You have to come to church Sunday night to get, I mean, Monday night to get ill. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're building something. And I need your block. I need your stone. I need your living stone. And that's a commitment. That's a sacrifice. But I'm telling you, it won't be a sacrifice for long. It'll be joy. It'll be joy in your life.